Hello, 여러분. Welcome to 국내파 영어회화, where we do our best. We really try hard to improve our speaking skills. This will be the last video of responding to a viewer's comment. It has been such a long journey. First, let's take a look at what he said in his comment. 발음은 정말 중요합니다. Question을 question이라 발음하시는데. B native를 만나보지 않은 영어권 사람들은 무슨 말 무슨 무슨 말인지 못 알아들을 가능성이 높습니다. In this comment, the point I'd like to clarify, I'd like to add my own opinion to is the native speakers part. The native speakers who have not met non native speakers, and supposedly those native speakers do not cannot understand poor pronunciation. To begin with. The more people who have diverse accents from diverse countries you meet, then the wider range of pronunciations you can understand. In contrast, if you have never met a, let's say, foreigner who speaks your language, who speaks your mother tongue as a foreign language, a second language, then you you might not be able to understand him or her because. You, you are not really get used to a foreign accent or diverse accent. Before giving my opinion, let me share my own experience first. Given that uh, I have encountered many situations where I have to speak in English, for example, I've taken many only English classes back in university, and once for six months uh, I, I worked for an international company, a German company, Bosch. Then, how many that kind of native speakers do you think? I've ever met. I don't even have to count because it amounts to zero. Unless you are planning to immigrate to U.S. or U.K. other English-speaking countries as a mother tongue, then you are barely likely to that sort of people. It would be even very unlikely that you would communicate only with majority of Americans or British. Now. Most of English speakers that I've met here in Korea come from non-English speaking countries such as China, Brazil, Portugal, Denmark. I can't tell you the specific number, but only probably below 5% of English speakers that I met here are real native speakers. And you, you must relate to this quite much. If you are working for now international companies, or if you're college students and you have met a lot of students from exchange students from diverse countries, the bottom line is that we don't have to micro fine tune our pronunciation when we speak in English because the vast majority of people you will communicate in in English, whether in 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 university or or in business. They are just like you who speak English as a second language. Even if you encounter real native speakers, then they might still be able to understand you quite well because number one, they must have experienced communicating with various people from various countries with various accents while they've been working. Number two, we barely make that serious pronunciation mistakes. However, what all good English speakers do have in common is high level of fluency. All foreigners that I met here, all foreigners who I've studied with, who I work with together, like no matter where they come from, they all speak English quite fluently without having hesitations or pauses in the middle. If they had stuttered a lot with low fluency, then they would have not been picked up as exchange students or would have not been hired in the first place for international companies because they. We have not been able to communicate freely. At this point, I think we have to take into consideration why we study, the, the purpose of studying English. If you want to get a good score on TOEIC, then you don't have to practice uh, speaking English in the first place because TOEIC doesn't test speaking skills at all. In contrast, let's say if your goal is to become a professional interpreter or translator, then absolutely you have to master. Every aspect of English. What you have to study, or more specifically speaking, what aspect of English you need to target mostly, how it depends on why you study. But if you're anything like me, whose goal is to, you know, become fluent, to to being able to communicate uh, in English under normal situations or general circumstances. For instance, having an exchange student experience or traveling somewhere. 
to other countries and, and meeting people there and probably drinking beers with them. Most commonly probably speaking English when you do business, especially working for um, international companies, then you'd better, you better place higher, probably highest value or the, the, the most tremendous weight on force first without fixating only on pronunciation. Here is a conclusion. I think we don't have to consider the situation where we, we meet real native speakers who might not understand us because of our, because of our pronunciation, because of our poor pronunciation, because that is simply relatively quite exceptional more than any other situations. Why would you be worried about very unlikely situation that would never happen. It's like we can't suddenly get stressed out comparing ourselves to professional interpreters because we will never have to speak English as well as them. It's unrealistic and it's, it's not really it's, it's not likely to happen. It doesn't simply align with our goal. And if we keep our feet on the ground thinking realistically and, and, and take into consideration the goal, the primary goal of studying English that we have to put fluent force over any other component of English. We don't learn English to impress others. We learn English to communicate with others. That's it for today and I feel very at the moment um, rewarded and I'm proud of myself finishing um, these episodes, three episodes. Um, finally, and uh, I, I'd like to take time to thank that viewer who left a comment and, and having me inspired. If you hadn't left a comment, then probably I would have had a headache looking for video content. So uh, yes, that's it for today. Then I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.